Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. We're in Asbury Park today with two members of the legendary disco group, The Village People. Felipe Rose was the first member recruited to join The Village People, and today he talks with us about how the group formed and the major success they achieved over the last 40 years. So Felipe, how did The Village People get started? I guess it was just thought that it was a, a decade, a century ago. I like saying that because it makes it really look really old. And, and in the sense that, historically speaking, um, in Greenwich Village, I was discovered by a producer by the name of Jacques Morale. I was dancing in clubs in New York City. And I was popping up as a, as a club fixture. Being half American Indian, I was like in my regalia. And during that time, you could walk around and, you know, dressed as a spaceman, as a cowboy, as anything, because it was the 70s. It was just a great way, too, uh, of self-expression. And I was known just basically as Felipe, the, the native Indian guy or whatever, but I would headline in clubs like Roseland and Experiment 4, The Anvil, Les Mouches, Studio 54. And so he kept seeing me and he, kept, and he asked me, like, you know, I have a project I want to talk to you about. And when he told me that what the project was about, I thought, that's a really stupid idea. <laughs> like a, a cowboy and Indian and a construction worker. And, and then I said, you know, what, what have I got to lose? You know, I, I'm, I'm at the right place at the right time. Let's see what happens. Now, you were the first recruit, right? I was the first recruit. And then he had Victor Willis in the studio already working on the music uh -huh. for the first album, but they didn't really have uh, a concept for the group. And so basically, he dictated to Victor the titles of the songs of what he wanted. Like the album was called Village People um, and by Village People. But again, he didn't have a group, and then the cover sh uh, shot was Models Only. And then uh, Victor brought Alex, the soldier, in. And then we all recorded the first album, which was a landmark album of landmark uh, gay uh, locations, San Francisco, Hollywood, Fire Island, The Village. And that album, when it exploded on the scene, culminated with the outing of the Anita Bryan 1977, uh, when everyone just came out of the closet all at once. Everything just exploded all at once. Now, you introduced America to disco, or did, was it happening before you arrived? America was already on it, but I think that we, along with Donna Summer, um, we gave disco a face. But that basically, uh, disco was really well on its way and very popular in the urban clubs, the gay clubs, and... Um, it was with that first album that Jacques Morali took it to L.A., to Casablanca Records, and gave it to the late Neil Bogart. And he thought, well, this is an interesting concept, so what does the group look like? And of course, when he told him that the group was uh, had a cowboy and an Indian, and uh, Neil looked at him and said, no, really? And Jacques <laughs> said, no, it does. And he said, well, okay. And immediately we did the second album, which was Macho Man. And that was a fluke because Macho Man, when it broke, it broke on the AM stations. AM before FM, right, it was big. which was huge. You know, and they still don't knock AM. AM <laughs> is still around, lingering around for the dinosaurs. Now, you know? what was on the first album that we'd recognize? San Francisco, Hollywood, uh, Fire Island, and, uh, and it was just, the, the San Francisco, Hollywood uh, medley was the, the, B, the A side of the entire album. Okay. Um, so there were really only four songs on that. And then immediately following Macho Man, and then everything just took off from there. We immediately had, had auditions, and then we kind of went by stereotype, with this guy looks like a construction worker, then the guy with the mustache, Glenn, the late Glenn Hughes, showed up. To sing on a fluke, someone bet him, I dare, I dare you to go and audition because they were looking for mustache types. Mm -hmm. 
So he had a rocking mustache. I mean, there'll never be a mustache like that. Outside of Tom Selleck, he's like number three in the world as far as uh, mustaches go. So he went and he got the job and they said, you're going to be the biker. But he was actually rode my motorcycles. Okay. So it kind of fell in place, you know, the whole thing. So now you you start the touring after the first album or the second? The second, right at the top of the second. What was that like early on? In clubs with a band, a, with a, like AP's band on the floor. They would like put lights in front of us, smoke machines. And, you know, we had this like, uh, the, the, the prototype, the protégés of the Gypsy Lane studio band these young kids from Philadelphia called Bittersweet. That's a group right there in itself. And we went and started touring around the country. And it was interesting because as we were touring, we could see the record sales going up regionally. Because back then we had Cashbox, Record World, the, the a Billboard magazine. So you could track all the record sales. And then we did Bus and Truck. So when we did regional uh, performing, and then we attacked on with interviews and television and radio, you could see the record sales swell. And yeah. Record World, I mean, what was the, the Tower Records? Tower Records, right? Tower Records was huge in LA, right. and they were played a big part in our career. We have to take a break now. We come back. I want to talk about those touring days. We'll do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Felipe Rose from the Village People here. We'll be back right after that. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. Felipe Rose is one of the founding members of disco icons, the Village People. In this segment, he talks to us about life on the road, the honors he and the group have been awarded, and the amazing artists they have shared the stage with. So Felipe, after the first album was released, you started touring. What was that like? The touring was amazing, and television was just unbelievable. We did every television show that you can even imagine. I think that we did Merv Griffin like something like 18 times. And Dick Clark, uh, when they got a uh, hold of the song, the dancers on the show were the ones that came up with the, oh, with the sign made? YMCA. So we stole that, but just to keep it in tradition. And so fast forward, you know, music started changing, rock and roll, Kaminsky Park, disco's dying, they're burning records, disco's dead. What do we do? We went to Europe. We went uh, uh, like something like 29 countries around the world and said goodbye to the U.S of A, uh -huh. and then of course that segue coincided sadly with the, the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, right. so I would come home and I, I kept coming home to many funerals uh -huh. and memorials, which is sad, and um, and so, you know, you just there, but for the grace of God, you know, you just keep living and keep doing what you're doing, what, what I know what to do, is, and then we segued and some members left. Yeah, I was going to tell you, but you're the, one of the original, but original several ways. and Alex, and then Re uh, Victor left. We replaced him with Ray Simpson. Randy Jones left, and we replaced them. And then 15 years ago, we brought in Bill Whitefield, who also lives here in Asbury Park. And we're going to talk to him later, I right know. Yeah, now. yeah. So he's around here somewhere, I hear. <laughs> he's the, he'll hear me. And so basically, we just finished, um, you know, uh, we were inducted into the Star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So I, I thought, uh, to me, I thought I, th I did it all. And then a month later, I was inducted into the Native American Music Hall of Fame. And I noticed you donated something to them, is that correct? And I know, to the American, Music, uh, American Museum of the American Indian, okay. I donated the gold single of YMCA. Why give a, a donation or something that, you know, I wanted to show to the, the public that would go to the museum that it's more than uh, Native Americans are more than kachina dolls and burden baskets that a gold record you know that we are all over the place that we are in music that we are in television we're in films we're writers and um, and there were people like everyone else in the melting pot of America now what was it like early on and even today as we walk through Asbury Park to have people recognize you What's that like? Well, it's great. But I, I, when I'm here, I, I can literally walk around undetected, which is nice. Unless you're wearing <laughs> Unless your I do that, my, my walk call. Then people go, oh, that he's in town. Uh -huh. uh, but it's, it's great because I, I, I tour and I, I get to come home. And, and I, I have this. This is my, my playground, actually. This side of the beach is where I go with friends. And um, the other side is way too crowded. And um, and I just enjoy and distress and really 
just enjoy the community. So, so let's go back to the village people as a group again. So you travel throughout Europe, you come back in the 80s, 70s, uh, throughout the 80s and 90s, people are singing and your songs. Then there was a resurgence with disco. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like suddenly it was back again. Now you, YMCA has performed at every wedding I can imagine, right? It raises the dead. It really <laughs> it does. I mean, you could probably, I mean, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you heard it in a funeral. You know? <laughs> right. And probably you'll hear it at mine. <laughs> See, I'm sure. Now, you still travel. You still do a lot yeah, of travel. Yeah, we just did, believe it or not, and, and Bill will tell you this later, we just did nine countries in one month. We went to Singapore, Macau, Philippines. I mean, it was crazy. Uh, nine countries, and now we're around the U.S., and we're sort of like in the middle of, it's not really middle of summer, although by the time we get done with everything, it'll be September. Now, do you perform with other 70s acts? Um, let's see. We were just with Sister Sledge, The Tramps, Rolls Royce, um, Nile Rogers. Yeah, we perform with a lot, yeah. Uh -huh. And what is that like? Bette Midler, <laughs> Bette Midler was with us, and that was crazy. I saw a picture of you with uh, Michael Jackson. I mean, you must have met. No, that people. was great. That was uh, back in 79, where we did a benefit for Jane Fonda for her husband then running for office, Tom Hayden, mm -hmm. or something like that. And so Bruce Jenner, who's Caitlyn today, and that picture that you saw is with Michael Jackson, Valerie Perrine, Jane Fonda, and Michael and all of us. That's a pretty that was bizarre picture. Really cool. What other things have you done in the last 20 years that you find to be really cool? Well, I experimented in cooking and worked on a couple of uh, cooking pilots and working on a show currently that I'm writing and, and producing with Bill and uh, recording simultaneously on my own. Yeah, tell me about that. I've, I've actually won uh, three Native American Music Awards for EPs that I uh, wrote and produced. Uh -huh. For the NAMIs, Native American Music Awards. And so that was rewarding because it brought me back full circle, back to like my, I say my people. Whereas they were saying, why are you coming this way? We're trying, we're trying to get out. We're trying to leave, you know. Was it unique to perform in that genre? Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, backup bands and well, backup singers. A couple of like the big, really, uh, Rez and the Indians were sitting in the audience like, what's this guy going to do? Like some disco dance? And I really brought the house down oh, that's with the first number called Trail of Tears, which won an, uh, the historical, best historical recording sure. that evening. But yeah, I mean, the, the life is constantly changing and evolving as I am and as the group. We're all now, we, we're all working on various projects and we come together to tour. And the beauty about what we do is that we have the cachet to be able to live here, for some of us, to live here and to just enjoy life, because it, it goes by fast. I want to talk about the new thing you're doing, the new television show that's in the works. We'll do that when we come back. Felipe Rose is our guest from The Village People. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. We are continuing our conversation with the village people. Earlier I spoke with Felipe Rose and now the construction worker, Bill Whitefield, about the projects the village people are working on right here in New Jersey. As Felipe mentioned earlier, you know, he and I both live here and uh, we love Asbury Park. We were attracted to the diversity, to the music scene, to the art scene, to the culture, to the, just all the wonderful things going on here. And um, having both been here, well, I've been here 15 years and you've been ten. here about, yeah, 10 years. and so. We've seen so much change here, and um, we want to try to find a way to uh, document and, 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 and you know, spotlight all the really wonderful things that are going on here. Uh, with music and culture and the arts is kind of one aspect that we want to try to document and uh, focus on, because there's just countless, endless things going on in that regard. I'm a history buff, so and he's a history I, I, I want to yeah. go and dive into the, the history of all the locals from, like, years gone by. Uh -huh. Yeah, and which, you know, I mean, we've got like Arthur Parr, so Van I tell. mean, you know, we even long before Bruce Springsteen, who we also love, but, um, but you know, also focus on also the beautiful homes that are being renovated and there's so much going on that's not really right here at the beach um, as you come to the beach. And then the other part of it we want to focus on is sort of the, the west side and the folks that are, you know, and, and not just the west side, but folks in who are here, who've been here, who, who were born and raised here, who might 
um, have more needs than other people and might be a little bit uncertain about what their futures are here. There's a lot of wonderful nonprofits and individuals and, and uh, businesses that are doing great things uh, to uh, help those people. Interfaith Neighbors comes to mind. We've been working, uh, doing some uh, documenting on a project that they're doing. With the Covenant House. The Coven with with, the, Covenant with House. the Covenant House. I don't know if you're aware of what's going on with them, but they're a wonderful, wonderful developer who does a lot of really wonderful things for, um, for people in need. So they're building right now a, a home on the west side for uh, homeless youth that they've invited us to come and document the process. So we've been getting footage of that. So you're working on a uh, potential right. series. For yeah, yes. absolutely. It's a docu-series yeah. and with a, bit of, with a splash of reality thrown into okay. it. Yeah. I, I would say that I'll be the reality. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, music yeah. is a vital part here. I'm being absolutely. musicians Huge. and construction. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, what types of things are you going to reach in that area? Well, we've been uh, working with the guys over at uh, Lake House. Uh, John Liedersdorf has got some programs going on. He owns uh, Lake House Music Academy and Recording Studios, which is a beautiful facility that he's uh, uh, put up on the uh, on Lake Avenue. Um, he's um, He's got a lot of wonderful programs that we want to try to spotlight. We've talked to him about uh, following him on some of his uh, things. Of course, you know, there's a lot of wonderful venues here, as we know. Watermark with Russell Lewis, they yeah. just now have given the, the green spot of lawn to many of bands now for the summer that will be playing. And yeah. a lot of these a lot bands, of up -and -comers, young, yeah. young bands, they want to just be seen which is nice you know it's nice exposure but at the same time they get to lick their chops and and perform for people that are actually you know passing by and we yeah. and when we talk about passing by on the boardwalk i mean it's multitudes of people sure that are on the boardwalk on the weekends even during the week during the summer right and you know of course the stone pony is here and you know the wonder, wonder bar, bar and you know house of independence and saint and you know McClune. and mcclunes and you know then and, and i know that uh, carter sackman which is a developer here they're they're working on trying to get the uh, the old savoy up and running which is a beautiful like i think a 800 seat opera house right in the heart of the downtown area um, and I have a background in theater because I used to be the executive director and, uh, and the artistic director at the Algonquin Arts Theater in Manasquan before I started performing full time with the village people. Um, and you know, we want to you know we want to just be a part of that. We want to do anything we can do to foster uh, the arts in Asbury Park because it is kind of what the city, in some ways, was built on. The history is all about fostering and know. involving ourselves with that yeah. as well, and mentoring some of the young students right. as well. Now you so, mentioned Bruce Springsteen earlier, yeah. who had a strong uh, start here. Sure. Have you worked with him at all? No, uh, we I, want we to. We want to. We just saw the uh, movie, the premiere of the uh, yeah. Before the Dawn. Just before the dawn. Just before the, the dawn. Is that yeah. upstage? That, yes, that was, that was the whole the documentary. We, and then, of course, the, the curtain. The curtain went up, and there he and was. There he was, was with Steve Van Zandt. Yeah. And what I love about him is that. He was just playing along. He wasn't, you know, he was in the he band. He was being Bruce. He was just, he, I mean, he was just, uh, he, he was just backing up. And he did do Johnny Be Good, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. But I mean, other than that, he's just part of the gang, you know, he's such a real, you know. Person. Are there other musicians that live in town that we don't know about? Wow. Well, probably, oh, absolutely. Lisa I mean, Sherman? Yeah, she's, you know, and there's, there's Isn't John Hall now? I heard that he had a place here, but you know, I've never met him. And I haven't been, seen him. Uh, yeah. But again, this is what we want to sort of explore on the show, okay. oddly enough, because and, and there are certainly some jazz jazz legends that are still living in the area. Um, there's all kinds of people that we don't even know about. That's partly why we wanted to do this show, because we live right here in this one square mile of, of just incredible diversity and art and music and culture, and we just want to learn more about it. The so, Southside Johnny, I mean, yeah. I've been on stage with him even when we did the Mayor's Bowl three years in a row. Right. And of course, he had to play Macho Man. <laughs> and yep. I had to take my tuck shirt open <laughs> and tie off. And, I heard and you performed with De Debbie Harry at one point. And that was, a, yeah, actually, that was a McClure's. McClure's, with, McClure's. McClure's. You were honored. Were you honored the, that night? We were he honored was, with yeah. the uh, Monmouth Arts Council. Right, right. Honored Monmouth her, Arts myself, um, T.M. Stevens, and uh, Siobhan Fallon. Uh -huh. right. And, uh, we, I was singing one of her songs <laughs> with uh, this young band, Quincy Mumford. Quincy Mumford, local and the guy. Reason, and she got mad and at I, you. For, I, I, and I got a one way or another. And I forgot that she went up on the stage and took the microphone. And she's like, she t I got her to sing, though. And then we did three songs. Right, right. And then the crowd just started jumping like was, they were, it was like a rave dance. A because, night. I mean, really, Deborah? Deborah Harry, Harry yeah, really? Hello. In New Jersey. Yeah, she was yeah, just awesome. coming to be honored and take her award and right, sit right, right. very quiet. But when I ruined the song, she just said, I don't think so. We've all been there when we've forgotten the lyrics. So, guys, how can we learn more about the Village People and the projects you're working on? 
people can find us on uh, Facebook, Felipe Rose and Bill Whitefield, um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Snapchat. We're, we're, yeah, we're working on the website the as website, the show gets yeah. developed. And it'll have more. its own site, the show. And the, and the name of the show right now is not, it's titled, but we don't really want to put it out there yet. Yeah, not quite ready to launch it. To but launch it, but when we, soon. we launch it, it'd probably be right about when this is airing, I think, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. Good thank luck, you. and we'll talk to you soon. Ten awesome. years in the making. There you go. <laughs> and thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.